All right, friends, let's talk about a little something called Quantum Link, a name that sounds like it could be the subtitle of a really bad 80s sci-fi flick. But nope, this was a legit online service that predated the internet as we know it. And if you're thinking, wait, like AOL, then ding, 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 you win a gold star. Quantum Link was basically AOL before AOL was AOL. In 1985, Commodore 64 users didn't have the luxury of browsing cat memes at 3 a.m., but they did have Q-Link, a proprietary online service designed just for them. It was a closed system, meaning if you had anything other than a C64, sorry buddy, you weren't invited to the party. But oh, what a party it was. You had email, called electronic mail, because apparently we were very literal in the 80s. There were message boards, downloadable software, stock market updates for all those high rolling C64 investors, and even multiplayer games like Club Carib, an on online virtual world that was basically a low res second life, but with way more neon and fewer weird social experiments. Of course, this was the dial up era, so half your experience involved fighting the modem listening to terrifying handshakes, and praying that no one picked up the phone. You better believe that lost connection hurt more than stepping on a Lego. And if you're thinking, hey, this sounds kind of like Mutiny from Halt and Catch Fire, you'd be absolutely right. Mutiny was a fictionalized version of these early online services. Q-Link, CompuServe, The Source, little walled gardens of connectivity before the web busted everything open. Except, of course, Q-Link didn't have Cameron Howe running around setting things on fire. At least, as far as we know. And get this, Quantum Link wasn't some obscure extra you had to go digging for. Nope, this baby came bundled with many later Commodore 64s. Case in point, look at this right here. Imagine unboxing your brand new C64, popping in the Q-Link disc, and stepping into the future. Sure, the future had a max speed of 300 baud, but hey, it was the 80s. We took what we could get. But here's the real kicker. Quantum Link evolved. It was the baby version of something much, much bigger. By 1988, the folks behind Q-Link, Control Video Corporation, decided they wanted to reach more than just Commodore users. So they took all that sweet, sweet online experience and created a new PC-based service called America Online. That's right, AOL was quite literally built on Q-Link's bones. In 1989, they started rolling out AOL for IBM-compatible PCs and later Mac users, but Q-Link itself kept chugging along for C64 fans all the way until 1994. Well, into the era of Windows 3.1 and the World Wide Web. So, for almost a decade, this humble Commodore exclusive service was still keeping the online dream alive. And you know the rest of this story. By the 90s, AOL was everywhere, mailing out CDs like desperate exes trying to win you back. But if you were an OG Q-Link user, you'd already been living that online life years before AOL flooded your mailbox. So, Next time you think about those free 1,000 hour AOL trials, just remember, it all began with Q-Link, a tiny, beautiful, Commodore exclusive corner of the online world. And honestly, if I had to choose between modern social media and logging into Q-Link on a bread bin C64, I mean, come on, this thing is kind of sexy. I choose this every time. Drop a comment if you remember Q-Link, or if you just want to complain about dial-up, I'll be here, waiting.